I know I have hosted a lot of farmers on my YouTube channel talking about how to start goat farming. But one thing for sure is clear that every farmer has their own experience. Now, today's episode is basically going to look at people who have little capital but would love to start farming. And what a better way to visit Lad Mixed Farm found in northern Uganda in the district of Nyoya. Is that correct? Nyoya district. Nyoya district was recently or previously cut off from Gulu district. But well, nonetheless, that's not important. What is important is we're here and we're going to talk to Mr. Arthur who quit his job and is now comfortably doing farming. And one of the ventures, apart from the others that we shall of course talk about in our different clips, is of course goat farming and he started it with a very small little money as he told me welcome to my channel thank you so how much. are you today i'm fine thank you for hosting us thank you you're welcome um it's 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 it we've been planning this visit for a very long time yeah but i'm happy that you allowed us to come and actually visit you uh say hello to our viewers uh, hello viewers, I'm um, happy to be here and sharing my experiences with you. Okay. Another thing that I shouldn't forget is Mr. Arthur here has a YouTube channel called Lad Mixed Farm. I'll link, I'll leave the link in the description, but also just type a search and, you know, uh, go and watch most of his content because he's giving out wonderful content about farming that you shouldn't actually miss out. My name is Dennis Duke, so let's get into the conversation. When you say starting up with little money, how much money did you have when starting up your goat farm? Mm, well, I will tell you that I had around maybe 8 million shillings. 8 million shillings, that's about uh, how many USD? Uh, 2,000? Maybe around there. Mm. Yes, and that's all I had to set up the structure, buy the animals, pay the workers, consult the vet and stock some little bit of medication okay. and juggle around that. So how did you go about it? What came first and how much did you spend on that? What came second and how much did you spend on that? Please break the 8 million for, down for us. Uh, thank you so much. Mm. Uh, it was quite a tough one. Uh, fortunately, I had the land. Mm. And then uh, the other issue was now to be able to identify the animals. But before the animals, I tried to look for materials. Now for the construction of the goat house, I ensure to use the local available materials. The resources I had, I, for instance, had some iron sheets, used ones, and I also identified some melia trees. Melia trees, I cut those from uh, the trees I planted along uh, the boundary of the land where we are, and so those provided the poles. So the other thing was maybe to buy the nails and what, and, uh, and the ham and so forth. So I was able to use that. I didn't even get a professional person to do it. I, myself, and the workers, we put up a shed provided we know that it was shielding the goats from strong winds and, uh, and, and rains, we were good to go. And so that's how I did. I think I spent around maybe uh, around 400,000 really on that particular venture, uh, structure. Mm. The, most of the money I wanted it to go into purchasing goats. But knowing that the money was still limited, mm. I resorted to buying local goats. Local, uh, traditional goats, but also the, a little few of the Mubende of the Mubende because when you look at the Mubende goat it has some good mothering abilities even the local ones mm. you find they can really grow uh, into big size uh, the challenge I had uh, was sourcing some of these animals they were not readily available you could not go to one particular farm and be able to identify those so I had a challenge also part of that money to be able to move uh, from district to the other trying out the different farmers mm. first within the northern sub-region mm. so I did that quite well and was able to identify some goats. Not all of them were at the point of, you know, conceiving. Others were a little bit young, which also cost me because that means I had to wait for a full year before they can be ready to be serviced. Mm. But was able at least to acquire around 50, um, 50 mothers. Okay. So it was quite a good number to start with. Now, <clears throat> of course, the challenge came when I had to identify different money. Now, this was a different source of income mm -hmm. to be able to buy a higot because a goat doesn't come cheap. I was able to go to one of the prominent farmers out in Buganda sub-region mm -hmm. and buy uh, a boa higot. But now knowing that I had the locals, I knew that once I introduced a 100% uh, boa higot, it will be able to give me crosses and be able to help me make the numbers, you know, come quickly. Mm -hmm. So that was quite good. And so I went ahead and identified uh, this higot 
um, much as one of the challenges I met, <coughs> out of the 50, mm. uh, it was only able to service eight goats. I mean eight goats. Mm. Uh, one of the challenges I noticed when I visited some of these prominent uh, goat farmers, they have very good genetics, no doubt about that. Now, when they have some of these good breeds, let's say the he goats that they would want to sell off uh, to other potential upcoming goat farmers, mm. they seclude these ones, they don't graze with the other mother flock and so forth. So they grow independently and in so doing, yes, they are a good breed, their size is good, but they are not that active because they are not being mixed with the other females in those particular farms. Mm. So when I brought that, I expected it to the road running, but it was a little bit docile. So out of the 50, it was only able to mount eight goats in the whole season. So that was quite a disappointment on my side. I had to, you know, I'm trying to practice the synchronization approach where I, how I want all the goats to, you know, mate during the same season, so that is better mm. and quite easy when we are dealing with the, <coughs> the kidding season. Mm. So in so doing, I had to remove the bark now, but with only eight mothers pregnant. Mm. So I had to go through that and <coughs> manage to only get actually I lost one of the goats in due process. Remember, when I went to some of these farms, some of the goats looked healthy, and the gentleman would tell me he was going to get me some from maybe the other herd that he has somewhere else. But on realizing, I noticed that they were actually having goats being bought from either a marketplace or some other people who are not looking after the goats very well. So some of the initial mother, uh, goat mothers that I brought, that, sold, that were chronically ill, disturbing. I lost around three goats, actually, out of those. Mm -hmm. And uh, some that conceived, uh, one passed away uh, when it was heavy, the other one uh, experienced an abortion. Mm -hmm. So all in all, I ended up having five that gave birth. And so you can imagine the frustration I had to go through, mm -hmm. but knowing that it's a learning curve, I didn't want to, be, to look at that. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to focus knowing that I would do a better job in the second, uh, you know, uh, period. There are so many ventures you could have chosen from. Why did you choose goat farming? Uh, actually, goat farming is a very, very interesting enterprise if you come to observe it and study it very well. Mm. Uh, you'll have, say, uh, 10 or 30 goats. Uh, if they're of mothering ability and if you have your back ready, uh, within five months, you're able to double that number, just assuming that a, a goat will give birth to one. Mm. But remember, there are those that give birth to twins. Okay? Mm. So, and remember, once you look after them properly, within 13 months, they should have at least given birth twice. Mm. So I looked at that and it was quite a, a very good, you know, you know, it was quite interesting and uh, enticing, you know, for, enticing you. for me uh, to go into it. And also, from, as I remember I told you that my father being a farmer, mm. I've grown up, uh, you know, looking after goats and so forth. So I just love them. They are very hardy animals. Uh, they grow very fast. They are lovable once you know how to look after them. It can actually be, you know, quite a very good hobby mm. if you're out there. Mm. I would really encourage people to go into goat farming. It's something that is quite interesting. Okay. And so that one really attracted me to goat farming. I usually hear farmers calling me sometimes and they ask, Dennis, I'm in Gulu, but I'm scared. Can boa goats survive in Gulu because of the, you know, heat problems here? It's a little bit, you know, the, the temperatures are quite high here. Yes. What do you say about that? Because I see your goats are surviving. Yeah, I can assure you that, well, it's quite hot here, mm. but the Boer goats are doing just fine. Mm. Remember I told you I bought um, the, a pure uh, breed, uh, a, a Boer, mm. a he goat, 100%, mm. and it did well, only that the libido was quite low because of being grazed alone, wherever I got it from. But here it has managed to come up well. If you look at it, it has put on weight. Mm. It's massive. Mm. And uh, actually the second uh, kidding season, uh, I have been able to get quite a number of kids. And if you look at the herd, uh, they are very healthy and they are adopting very well uh, to this temperature and the pastures that we have around. So it's not really a, a, a challenge. I would really encourage even if you're in the north, just go ahead and have your boars on site. Okay. Yes. How did you go about the challenge of not being active, the male, the male not being active? Okay, I had to endure that because remember they don't come cheap. Mm. I, it, I had to part with the three million shillings to acquire just one he got. Mm. And so when I got that disappointment, I tried to talk to the gentleman and he told me to give it time, mm. that probably because of the stress of moving that long mm. distance. But remember, it's now two months down the road, I wasn't seeing stress in that particular goat. But I just noticed that 
it was not really familiar with mounting. Mm. But when it came, so in the process, as I prepared myself for the second uh, kidding season, mm. I went ahead and identified another he goat. Uh, because sometimes these he goats, you need to put a competitor around if you want them to really be very aggressive. Mm. But it turned out that the other one, which was docile in the beginning, mm. turned out again to be very aggressive more than the first one. Mm. So as a result, uh, most of the goats uh, were able to conceive. And if you look around, we have so many beautiful uh, crosses. And so we hope again to, uh, you know, release the he goats again because now we're in July. At the beginning of August, we shall release again the he goats to go back there and keep them there from August, September up to end of October and then be able to remove them. Okay. So for now, I think I must say we are doing fine. So Mr. Arthur, what do you feed your goats? Uh, on this farm, I actually do free range mm -hmm. uh, system whereby we have enough land mm. where we just, you know, release the goats and go and feed them. Mm. Uh, what we do basically is to uh, leave and set them off at around the 11. 11. That is when the dew, you know, has dried up a bit, mm. if it has not been a rainy day. Mm. And so they'll go and feed. And they'll come back at around the 1. Then we leave them there. We give them mineral salt and so forth and water. Mm. They will rest up to around 3.30. Then we can take them back again for the second, you know, round, Crazy. and then bring them at six thirty. Mm. And so, by when you look at them, they are well satiated and uh, fine. So that's what we do. We still have um, a big piece of land. The animals are quite few. Mm. So I'm not seeing any challenges when it comes to pasture. The quality may not be the best when you look at the pastures we have around. I have uh, a menace of a, the spear grass mm. type of grass. <clears throat> which is not normally palatable, the, the, the goats don't like it. So what we are doing, <clears throat> we are opening up some of these uh, blocks and planting in some crops, like we have been able to plant uh, the chili. Uh, that's particularly a potential grazing ground, mm -hmm. but it's a way of killing this spear grass so that by the time we grow these numbers, at least we shall have planted some pastures there. Knowing that we normally have the dry season here, mm -hmm. if you know this place being in the northern part of the country, there is a problem of bush burning. Mm. And to avoid that, uh, I mean to, 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 <clears throat> to look out for that challenge in case they burnt the fields without our knowledge, mm. we've set aside a, at least an acre where we've been able to plant uh, supernapia grass. Mm. So we've not harvested yet because the season is just beginning. We are still in the beginnings of the rainy season. Okay. So our plan is to be able to harvest that and make some, uh, you know, <clears throat> silage, some hay, some silage. And, say, and hay that we can keep. But that okay. is to help us take mm. us through that period when they've burnt mm. maybe a week or so mm. and when the grass starts you know recovering and then we shall be good to go what challenges have you had with <clears throat> free range system of or free range system of course okay one um being in a um, in a farming community i'm within uh, <coughs> i'm settled nestled within um a farming community my neighbors are farmers mm. and uh, i've not been able to fence off the land yet so I've been having some of these goats that like, you know, escaping from the others, trying to look at a, fl a, f a fleshy, you know, ground. uh, grounds and looking at the maize and so forth and trying to steal some, some crops and eating the leaves from that side. So it has been a problem uh, having conflicts with the neighbors. I've been able to, actually those that I menace, I've been able to, you know, put them on, on a rope uh, to see if I can tame them. Because you find some of them are very good breeds and I wouldn't want to lose it out by selling. If it has a challenge, I try to put it on a rope as I see how to, you know, <coughs> uh, you know, overcome that. The other challenge I've told you is uh, um, the grass is not that palatable. It's quite a challenge. And we are trying to open up these grounds by cultivating these soils uh, so that we can be able to plant uh, pastures. Okay. Yes. In terms of diseases, isn't free range associated with a lot of diseases compa con con compared to zero grazing? Yes, that's true. However, I'm fortunate enough that much as my neighbors are farmers, they don't have animals. So I am, the, I'm, I am kind of a loner where I am. And the lower part of the, f of the farm, we are, the boundary is actually a stream, a river. Mm. And so we don't have people coming from the other side or animals crossing over. So on the other sides, on the other three sides, they are basically gardens. Mm. There are few animals, those who have them on ropes. The problem comes when it is the dry season. There is actually um, an interesting scenario in the north. Mm. There is a bylaw uh, or there is a, an ordinance or <coughs> I could call it 
they like releasing their animals during the dry season to move freely. Mm. And uh, this, <clears throat> during the last season, dry season, they let them from the 15th of January mm. up to the 15th of March. <clears throat> and so they're moving freely. And you find animals coming up to this place and you have no much to Control do about it because it. it's a policy, it has been like that. Mm. But now, when I talk to the authorities, they challenge me that I think to avoid this and avoid clashing with the community members, mm. just fence, fence off. Mm. Fence off and no animal will cross over into your mm. farm. But it's going to be very hard and to costly. stop yes, these animals to come through. So that is some of, uh, one of the things I've noticed, but we are trying to live along with that. So as we wind up, please, um, encourage somebody out there that wants to join farming as a business. <clears throat> Thank you very much for that. Um, I would really want to encourage anybody out there that would want to come into farming, especially taking farm, farming as a, as, a, as a business, whether you want to come in uh, to make it a full-time venture, or whether you want to have it established and you still run your other, you know, businesses, it is a very viable, <coughs> viable, you know, um, venture to go into. I would encourage people, especially to go into animal uh, production. With animals, you cannot go wrong. It can be well adapted to the climate uh, vagaries mm -hmm. of weather and so forth. Whether it rains so much, the grasses will be there. Whether it shines so much, and even if they do the bush burning and so forth, there will always be some dry grass and leaves that the goats can nibble on, whether be it sheep. Mm. Even when it comes to poultry, mm. it is easier when you're looking after poultry than maybe because you just have to plan and make sure that you have your feeds ready and so forth, even, you, even if you're doing rabbits and so forth. Mm. It's different when you're doing crop farming, especially seasonal crops. It can really hit you hard if you're not very strong. Mm. Uh, so you can also do crops, but please go in when you know what you're going in for. Uh, because for it, especially the three, the seasonal crops, uh, they can easily be affected by the climate and sometimes you may end up not harvesting anything. If you make it, you can still as, at the same time get a bump harvest. Mm. But that's, you know, up and down. But mm. when it comes to animal production, uh, that is very stable, very steady. And also when you look at the labor that you need to incur when you're, really when you're really employing uh, people to look after your animals, mm. 200 goats can be looked after by one person. So if you have 600 goats, you're basically looking at three, three people. Mm. But if you're talking about six acres or 10 acres that you're trying to plow, mm. you are looking at around six, seven people to look after that, uh, to, to make sure that they are, are weed free and so forth. And it is very expensive and there's a lot of worker turnover. Before you know it, they have moved on. As you try to identify the workers to come and rescue your garden, it's already getting bushy. And you know when crops are affected by too much weeds, you are not going to realize the weeds, I mean the harvest, as you had anticipated. Okay. So farming is very, very good, but please make your homework very clearly. Know what you want to go into and make your preparation right and be able to venture. So where do you see lad mixed farm? Or what is the vision for lad mixed farm? Um, here at Lad Mix Farm, we really want to strive to be a center of excellence mm. where we can be able to, you know, bear the standards of what, you know, um, agribusiness should be. Well, for instance, we talk about goat farming, we want to be able to have very good genetics, mm. which we can be able to give out to people around. Mm. We want to be able to have, um, make it a, a learning center where we allow people from outside, you know, uh, to come and uh, learn from us and see how we are doing it and also be able to, you know, uh, see how we can be commercially viable and, uh, you know, bring in the numbers. Uh, because as I told you, we still have some space. If you notice, um, the goats are really nibbling on off a very little portion from what is available. So we want to be able to produce the numbers that can adequately, uh, you know, feed on this grass and make sure that uh, we are not making losses out of that. So, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of this particular session. I've been chatting or talking to one farmer, uh, Mr. Arthur from Lad Mixed Farm, found here in uh, northern yeah. Uganda, Nyoa District. My name is Dennis Duke. Don't forget to go to his channel, Lad Mixed Farm, and subscribe. Continue watching his content. 
support him. He has really nice content. I don't recommend people that are not doing good. I recommend I visit people who are doing exceptionally well. And Mr. Arthur here is one of those. So please go there and we'll see you definitely very soon. But also don't forget to visit us at Sungura House located in Bukoto and come and eat really nice food. Until then, goodbye.